Hey everyone, this is Almost Machine, and we almost have an inspection area. Uh, two weeks ago, we went and picked up this surface plate right here. We've got a nice net cover over the top of it right now to keep it from getting damaged. And uh, we're going to take a look at its condition. We're going to put a surface plate on top of this one and see if we have a lot of lows. Maybe we might need to have crew come out and resurface it, but here we go. It's a 24 by 36 inch plate, 4 inches thick, probably weighs about 500 pounds. We had some fun with our forklift moving this thing around. And uh, we've got a height gauge with a tense indicator on it right now. Take a quick look at it. Granted, this is not a repeatometer. So we're dropping a little low there. And these are probably going to show up, so we've got to uh, take my hands off it. It's wherever they had it before. There's some rust spots. This is a rust spot area. It's looking pretty good right now. All right, so let's get this uh, surface gauge off of here. See what we can take a look at with the plate, with the other plate on top. But it does have, it is impregnated with a 60 mesh diamond, 6040, and it has already been used on another surface plate that we have located behind. We're going to put this down, do a light rub. I'm not expecting it to cut excessively, I hope not. There may be some action. So this is going to show us whether we have highs and lows and where those may be. As you can already see, we're picking up here, 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 here. I'm going to be very careful with the way I handle this plate. See how it's just, it is literally floating on here right now. There's a little extra drag on this side. This is where the rust was. You can hear that. Before we put the diamonds on this cast iron plate, it was spotted against the double A which is sitting over there with the indicator on. Right now it's just floating on a cushion of air, getting any little tiny high spot. This is always fantastic when you have one that's like this. I can't grade one. I don't have an auto culminator. But I can certainly feel when a plate is nice. about it so we can see the um, the low spots on the plate right now we've got here and here some low here here and this is where the really light flower from we'll call it flower from the surface plate the granite and the quartz lightly depositing throughout various little spots here 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 right here some over here gouge that's kind of filled in, low here, right here, and then a small section here. <laughs> very, very small. Yeah, I'm done. We're done with that. I have no idea what grade this thing was or is. It had no markings on it 
at all. A little scale here. Take a look at how much completely used weighs. It's 44.6 pounds. That's pretty heavy. It's a lot of weight. You saw it just sliding across the top of this plate. That'd be a beautiful. Really good shape. We'll put the indicator back on here. Take a look at it. Okay, so we changed our setup up just a little bit. Took the indicator out. We took the indicator out quite a bit more. We gave it a little bit more distance. And one thing I want you to see when we're doing this is that when I have it on the edge here, we're at zero. As I pull it back, you're going to see this almost rise up. The indicator is going to indicate low. And then when I come back, as I'm sliding it, the indicator is going to measure that the surface has come up. And then back to zero, and this time as I go forward, the indicator is going to revolve further around to this side. If I stop, it will turn back to zero. And again, this is where the importance of having a repeatometer comes in because it doesn't, it's not affected in the same way. Very, very interesting. So when we got the plate, it, it was in um, the stand had been, I guess, pushed by like a truck or something. So it was leaning to one side, we straightened it up, and then looking at it, we noticed that it's just contacting the plate on all kinds of different areas for the, for the floor. So we've got two new angle plates underneath here. That right along, about a quarter to a third of the way in from, in the, from the outside. And we have one adjustment point here, two adjustment points underneath here, with a really thin rubber mat pad under each one of the, the adjustment screws. So it's just a, a bolt with an extra nut spun up, welded in place with a large washer welded in place. So we're gonna bring you in a little closer, take a look underneath. I'm not the best welder in the world. We did take things in. It looks okay. It's holding up just fine. There's some gaps and that's the floor is not level, but the top of this plate is level. We have a precision level for doing that. And maybe we'll show that in another day when we're doing another plate. So as you can see, looking under here, we have the rubber plate, the washer. I, I don't think you can see it from where you're at, but we'll, we'll bring it in for a different angle. Or maybe this one. You see the adjustment nut here. We can turn this to raise and lower the plate to bring it in a level. It's really nice to have the three points because you can use one. To, to change one axis and then the other two to bring the other in and just make those small adjustments where you're not trying to chase yourself in circles. If it's multiple points and your surface that you're resting on isn't flat, you're just going to go in circles trying to get something like this flat. The bottom of most stones is just a rough cut. It's not been polished or ground and its, it's position can deviate. And as you can hear, it does want to ring, which is kind of beautiful. So I did want you guys to take a really quick look at the other place we've got. This was a, this one was in really bad shape where we learned about how to use the diamonds. This was a, um, this was an old CMM plate. It was out, I, I have no idea how much it originally was out, over, over 30,000 some different spots across it. It's not a true surface plate in, in the terms of the thickness or the material. It's some type of rock. It's a granite, it's just really soft. So we take great care of it, but it is nice. It does have mounting holes, and we can use it for some fixed terrain and some additional measurement later on. And we also showed the, the cast iron plate that we have, it's an old Bosch. One side for diamond, I'll probably take this back out and have it reground. I'm definitely gonna remove the diamonds with aluminum at some other point in time. And this one is our a play or standard plate that we don't really do much of anything on other than keep it for inspection purposes or at least comparing other plates to it having at least a reference gives us a good idea where where we're tracking with this plate and the big plate the new big plate or the small cast iron plate it puts us in good shape at least we have some we have some foundational equipment to go with our inspection equipment as to 
what we're dealing with. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at the surface plate and a, a light diamond resurfacing on the top of it. We picked this thing up off of OfferUp, a really good deal. These things can hit and miss like the other one we, we did the same way. It was way out and spent a lot of time on it. I, I hope this helps keeping you from spending a lot of time with what you have to work with. Be sure to keep your surface plates covered. You don't want to have that extra dust build up and this is it's kind of fun. I almost use it like a workbench but anything uh, anything that it becomes a table in this shop seems to just fill up with space right off the bat. Anyway, have fun. Thank you.